I want to give a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Therapy isn't something to run away from, it's a vessel to run towards. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online, so break out your comfies. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time. Any time. And schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. No more fumbling to get a session on the calendar. You schedule based on when the time is right for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. Therapy changed my life for the better, pun intended. And with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash rocky. That's better h e l p dot com slash rocky. My family, the gals, they came into Manhattan last week so we could spend the day in the city galloping all over. The same family that took a picture in Central Park on a random Monday while Dave Chappelle just casually walked by us. The same family that goes joint for joint while we giggle through the Big Apple. I feel so lucky not only to have a podcast where I can share our day together and just cement it in history, But also, I feel lucky for them. The night before we were all together, we were hanging out, and the plan was early-ish metro north into the city. But first, to start our day off, I just got to give a shout out to my mom. She got up super early, got ready, and made all of us train breakfast. That's right, train breakfast, bagels for every person. That's seven people with a two-slot toaster and all the bagels had to be sliced and cream cheesed. Why'd she do it? Well, she did it because she's our thoughtful leader who cares about her family and everyone should just be more like her. And you better motherfucking believe everybody's eyes lit up when they saw those surprise train bagels. She started the day by planting a seed of goodness with that one act of kindness. This week, do something, one thing, anything that'll make someone's life easier. I'm not even saying bigger, badder, or better. I'm saying easier. My cousins and I peeled off real quick when we first got to the city because I had to drop a bunch of stuff off at my place. They came with me, made it part of the adventure, and I looked at them and I said, wow, we're like really grown. We've been having full days in New York as a family since before I can remember. But then one day, You're just an adult, and you don't have to ask your mommies, is it okay if we go do our own thing really quick? We can just be like, hey, we're going to go do this thing real quick. And that's how fast life moves. Of course, I've been an adult for almost longer than I have it, so this isn't new, but my cousin also had one of those weed pens that makes you cough so hard when you hit it that you have to be careful you don't throw up. Just me, only me. I know it can't be just me. And so maybe that's what sent me into that existential circle of life rabbit hole thought. I don't know. When we reconvened with everyone, we had no plan, which is the norm. That's how we do it. But it was a really hot day for sure. So if you're going to have a hot walking day with your family in Manhattan, you've got to have some pit stops to refresh, baby. Those pit stops will make you feel like a new person. A place to pee, a place to refill your water, touch up your makeup. That's where I come in. Knowing all the hideaways, the spots, knowing the hideaways around town are my contributions to the group. Hey, did you know that there's a mayor of the meatpacking district? I believe his name was Roberto. My mom met him on the corner and she introduced me to him and then he invited me to an Italian film festival. I think when the mayor of the meatpacking district personally invites you to an Italian film festival, you gotta go. Plus, I love doing random ass things. Doing random ass things, that's what keeps you well-rounded. Grazie, Roberto. Oh, have you been to Little Island? 
I hadn't been. The only way I can describe it is it's like Bedrock from the Flintstones movie, specifically the one with John Goodman. It's just this gorgeous hidden gem all the way on the west side. It's so green, great views, excellent walking paths. You can bring a joint, a book, a bottle of wine, a blanket, picnic food, a Bluetooth, your best friend, your dog, your sunscreen, because New York's hottest island is little. After that, we walked along the water, and Kenan Thompson just walked by us. I don't mean to blow up your spot, Kay, if you were meant to be somewhere else on a Monday or early evening. I just thought it was so cool that you walked by. And if you thought that the adventure stopped at walking past Keenan, that's where you're wrong. It didn't. We walked over to Washington Square Park where there was a DJ and a ton of people dancing. Obviously a planned event, but I'm just announcing this to the world in case you're the kind of person who needs and wants to dance at 6 p.m. outside for free to good music on a Monday. And you're welcome for relaying the message. And our last stop was Little Italy, of course. It's a tradition. Whenever we're all together, we end our day in Little Italy. All that walking, we got a carbo load, baby. I try to keep it real on here, and I'm gonna keep it real. I was feeling great all day until the second we sat down. When we sat down, I felt like the entire day of walking and heat hit me at once. I had this headache, I had no appetite, I felt sticky, ugh, don't get me wrong. I'm still cracking jokes. I'm still having a laugh. The vessel was just out of fuel. Let me tell you something. Whatever you think is the right amount of water for you on a hot day, triple it. Triple it. All the water I had that day exited in my body. It turned into this plasma-like consistency, and then it stuck right to my skin. There wasn't a hideaway in Manhattan that could help me. That feeling of the day stuck to my skin like a crying toddler. And what makes me the most sad is I feel like I missed an entire half a bowl of fettuccine Alfredo. I couldn't finish it. Normal not sticky Rocky would have finished the whole... I guess I should say not as sticky Rocky. I'm always a little sticky, but I'm a woman on the go. I didn't know who this really sticky Rocky was at this point. I couldn't relate to her. One thing I do love about Little Italy is that the male staff objectifies you just enough to make you feel like after a long day, you're still a ciao bella and not a cow smella. You feel me? A lot of winking with every water refill, every bread drop, this waiter, he's winking and winking and winking. The owners are blowing kisses. The chef is jerking off. When he dropped off that fettuccine Alfredo, I had to check and make sure it wasn't a homemade sauce. You know what I'm saying? If it was jizz. There have been so many New York days with my family. Throughout the years, they blur together, and we don't remember what we did when or what happened where. We just know how we felt and that we had fun. But now we can put the pieces of this day together forever. Mom, Debbie, Maria, Dee, Katie, Olivia, and Kaylee, I love ya. To more hot and sweaty days in the Big Apple, baby. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello. Did you have a good week? I sure hope so. I hope you got laid in the shade, sipping a Gatorade. I know I did. Will Smith said it best. It's like the summer's a natural aphrodisiac. I haven't seen Barbie yet, but by the next time an episode comes out, I will have an absolute full report on what critics are calling, I don't know, the best? I've only heard amazing things. I'm definitely a Barbie girl. I'd hardly call this the Barbie world, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I bet women would not be having their rights stripped away law by law if we were living in a Barbie world. This is my impression of politicians having a conversation about taking away women's rights. Oh, I'm having so much fun! Well, Barbie, we're just getting started. Ooh oh, ooh oh! I had 83 Barbies growing up. 83! 
For my third birthday, I was gifted a hot pink Barbie car while wearing a hot pink leather jacket and while Prince's little red Corvette played in the background. I don't really know what age I stopped playing Barbie, maybe 10, 11, 12, but that's a long time to love something, you know? I was out with some friends on Friday night and I sang Barbie Girl at karaoke. Now, I don't know how you picture that going down. I fantasized it like this. Me doing cute dance moves while hitting all the notes and my autograph being requested, nay, demanded after the performance. But mostly it was just me being out of breath, trying not to pant into the mic, while also doing choreography that was foreign to both me and my body. More Raggedy Ann in a pink top vibes, but that's okay, honey. Raggedy Ann was a star too. Speaking of stars... A recent interview with Kelly Clarkson and Sandra Bullock came on my algorithm and I watched it. And for a second, I thought, oh my God. Sandra Bullock, do you age? She looks timeless, she looks flawless, skin tighter than the bottom of a freshly blown up balloon. And then I went to Google, because I was gonna Google, what's her secret? But I stopped myself and I remembered, oh. She's literally been a star since the movie Speed. Her cup runneth over with coinage. So now you don't have to Google the secret. People, we want to Google everything through any inconvenience, anything we forget. Use brain? What brain? I have small box in pocket with light. I stare at little light box for hours and hours. Box makes me feel good and tells me fact I like just for me. Little Lightbox takes all my precious time in exchange for my only soul. Little Lightbox with answers is best friend. What? Box for phone calls? Yuck. I ignore. No answer. I don't want to. I want to watch Stranger cut many ingredients into bowl while Robin Thicke Blurred Lines plays under it. Little light box tells me everything. If I put little light box down, I immediately pick little light box up. Little light box cripples my social skills and makes me walk with head down in the street like dummy or pay attention to it while I drive huge vehicle that could kill on impact. I don't care. Little light box loves me. I get older, life fades away, and Little Lightbox gets better and better. Ice cream's so good. (sighs) All I'm saying is if you're trying to remember something, give yourself a minute without relying on Google. I know you can't be inconvenienced for a goddamn second, but you have a big, squishy computer right behind your eyes. And it's up to you to keep the software updated. Oh my god, this isn't even a high thought, but go with me on this. You know how we only use roughly 5% of our brains? What if, ride with me here, what if humans used to use 100% of our brains? And because our brains were so powerful and computer-like, we didn't need to keep physical records of anything because, duh, your brain and his and hers and their brains remembered everything. Then when those humans got taken out by, I don't know, the Ice Age or whatever, and give me a break for not knowing what wiped these humans I'm speaking of out. I only use 5% of my brain, maybe 8 on a good day. And then when the new humans popped up, the cavemen, They started out at about 2%, and now we're only evolved to 5% brain capacity because you need to Google which band sang Wonderwall. Well, it was Oasis. But personally, I like Jay-Z's version better. How are you okay with only using 5% of your brain? Don't you want to expand it more? And don't you think that's an incredible waste of a brain? Why are we all just okay with this? And to think we got here... All because the little light box showed me a video of Kelly Clarkson and Sandra Bullock. Quick unrelated message for anyone working on AI. Hey, smarty, chill for a second with the robots and figure out a way to make dogs live longer, you fucking revolutionary genius of our time. Keep dogs healthy and spry and add another 25, I don't know, 30, 40, if you really a baddie, years to their life. Also, humans. Why do we, and I shouldn't say we because I don't know what the fuck you do in your house, but why do I stay cutting out words when talking to Alexa? Alexa, turn on living room lights. Alexa, turn off all lights. If you do that too, I'm going to tell you right now, the word the doesn't stand a chance in the future. 
That brings us to Rocky's highest thoughts, my most stoned thoughts of the week. Number one, do Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's kids have a last name? Number two, I wonder what age Joan Rivers stopped having sex for real. Number three, hieroglyphics. What if they were the most hilarious, prolific jokes of all time? But we'll never know what they mean because hieroglyphics were never and could never be translated. And number four, did somebody translate hieroglyphics? My guest this week is returning member of the Party God Squad, member of the Toosie Club, and friend of mine for almost 15 years, comedian Nick Alexander. Nick's wild word was a lot, and his story proved that to be true. Nick is a bi-coastal comic, an extremely funny man who just keeps growing and keeps building, and he's the guy to follow if you aren't already doing so. Don't say I didn't warn you. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me at Wild Nights with Rocky on TikTok and Instagram, at Wild Nights Pod on Twitter. If you want to watch extended interviews with all of my guests, please subscribe on YouTube. You can support the show for 2 or $5 a month by joining my Patreon. A big thank you and a future thank you to everyone who's written and everyone who will write a review when this episode is over. It really does make a difference. And now, please enjoy another Wild Nights conversation with Nick Alexander. Nick, welcome back. Thank you for doing the podcast. Rocky, what's up, girl? How you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. I'm so happy that you're back on the show. The last time I saw you was earlier in the year when we did, when you hosted yes. the, the show. That was great. That was a it was a really good show, right? We had a really good lineup, a nice little pop in, you know, yes. surprise guest. Uh, oh, what yeah. was it called? The the Secret Society show. It was... Secret Society show. Yes, yes. Oh. Everyone on that show except for Nika King was a past guest of the podcast. And okay. Obviously, we were supposed to have our uh, Big Daddy Sife on, but he had some other obligations. But that that was all right because you absolutely crushed it hosting, and it was oh, thank honestly. You. It was so good for me because obviously I know I've known you over well over a decade now. I yes, know yes. how great of a comic you are, but you've been in LA. So mm -hmm. I to see you and see how much you've grown and just like the swag with it and everything, it was just great. Yeah. Yeah, you saw really early Nick, like young Nick just taking stage time and uh -huh. paying do paying dues. And just progressively working a set and getting better and more comfortable. And then, like, mm -hmm. I go away. And then, yeah, it had been about five, six years since you probably saw me perform. So Why then it's like, yeah. Maybe more. Maybe, yeah, maybe more because yeah. you stopped working. When did you start working at Ha? 2012. Yeah, and then Ha, -ha d uh, died <laughs> <laughs> or, or was sold and uh, remodeled or renamed or whatever like that, like a few years after that. So, yeah, it had been a long time. But you, but it's crazy because, you know, even if it had been 10 years since you last saw me, for at least two years, you saw me every night. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Two, three years, you watch me perform every night, every single night. So, like, yeah, those were, man, just, yeah, looking back, it was like I was really just trying to be, be get good and, and be comfortable. Man. And, yeah, yeah, that club. Shout out to to Hot Comedy Club. You know, it was a place where I can get reps, and I and I was able to grow at a faster rate than most comics who start out. And I always remember that, even with the the you know politics or whatever you feel like you were not getting or whatever from comedy, or whatever. I just always remember like, yo, I'm I'm definitely getting better than eighty five to ninety percent of comedians starting out doing comedy because of how much stage time I was getting. Um, so yeah, yeah price is good. Fun times, fun times. We both moved on to bigger and better things. I you know? also remember how much, because, you know, there can be new people in the mix and they may, yeah. may not always get treated well, specifically new comics. But I just yeah, remember yeah, that yeah. corner of guys. I felt like all those guys were so seasoned and they really loved you and kind of took you under their wing. Sean, OC, Francisco. Yeah, Mike Gaffney, JP Justice, mm -hmm, yeah, JP, uh, yep. Pat Brown, Rodney Laney. Yeah, um, I just messaged Rodney. We we're supposed to hopefully get up, but he was, you know, he does a lot of ships, so it's like he's in and out of town. Yeah, a lot. But yeah, man, yeah, good, to, good, good times, good times. Good and time. yeah, the Secret Society show was fun. I had a one of the time shout out to St. Mark's Comedy Club that that yeah. hosted us. Alex and Danny, what's going on? But I would say in general, it is a lot to produce a it comedy is. show. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
it's a lot. So Nick's wild word was a lot. And I will say, Nick, I believe you were the fifth episode I've ever done of this show. And that early? Really? I was that yeah. I didn't realize that. Yes. Oh, wow. yes. You were like right up in the beginning. I think you were the fourth or fifth episode. And everyone should go back and listen to it because I was obviously, again, starting out and getting getting the yeah. show under um under my feet, whatever. But Nick came with the wildest story. I mean, he was dropping celebrity names. It was. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, Have you listened to we, it? Yeah, you can listen to it, of course. We can't listen to it right yeah, now. But <laughs> yeah. imagine we stop have, and just reflect. That would be fun. <laughs> I, yeah, right. The reflection uh, episode. Can you I, do you remember like any little bit? I have no yes, idea what it story was. The I told. story you told with um, Tommy Davidson. You were on the road with Tommy Davidson and Matt Richards and the hotel room. Oh yeah. Okay, the Lancaster gig. Great. Yes, All right. Yeah. Yes, me, yes, shout out to my brother, my big brother Matt Richards. Yes, another high alumni. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was definitely a good story because yeah, we it just yeah, yeah we a, a lot story. happened that night. It, thank and you. I wasn't <laughs> expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. So Nick, I am so excited to hear your next wild night. So give it to us a lot. Okay, so I yeah, you're gonna get a lot. Um, it's hard to start because it's like there's a backstory. All right, let's hear behind it. what takes place that night. Mm -hmm. If I can go into it a little bit, oh, so please, please. there's this um. I don't want to say who also knows her because that yeah we're That's gonna try okay. to keep we, her. As... We can uh, change names too. We protect the innocent and not so innocent on the show, so feel free to change names. No, it's just it's somebody Matt knows, but um, gotcha. I I doubt she'll watch this or what. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe she will. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe so anyways, she's a huge fan. <laughs> right, she could be your. Like, she saw the fifth episode to support me, <laughs> and then I had no idea she watched it. All right, so there's this there's this woman who uh, I'll say I I have known for damn damn near almost ten years also, mm -hmm. and I've been cool cool with right now off first glance I was attracted to her. Um, she was a supporter of another comic, like going to his shows, and then saw me with him, and then we kind of struck up a bond of our own, right? Right. And you know he might he. he, he did mess with her a little bit, but like, uh, you know, it didn't go like too far or like they didn't become boyfriend, girlfriend. You know how it is. It's like women, you know, hang with comics. And then sometimes you kind of like mess with another comic or another comic attractive. And it gets a little weird, you know, in terms of the yeah. entanglements, if we want to, you know, use that. Uh, we do, we do. Yeah. Funny to, guys to are Jada. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was I was attracted to her. She was like a you know pretty la la Latina, you know. Um, I don't want to even say which type because it's just like let me charge. I'm trying to keep it vague as possible, but Latina, yeah. mm -hmm. Afro Latina. We'll go there. Gotcha. Um, she would come to the shows and hang out. We were like doing a lot of like gigs, like Lower East Side and Midtown, whatever. And she thought I was funny. Thought I was cute. Mm -hmm. Very flirty, very aggressive. You know, like New Yorker, born and raised. So like that's the energy I'm getting. And mind you, I'm like 21 maybe 22 at the time so like you know i'm i'm just amazingly confident and thinking i could just at that point by then when i realized i was funny and i was legal i can get in the clubs and bars i'm like you know what let me just shoot my shot i don't care i don't have nothing to lose right. and we kind of hit it off really well so one night we go out drinking um and like uh she she and the thing is she she when she has like um alcohol issues she'll she'll when she gets drunk and gets crazy, which we, we, we are going to get into, yeah. but backstory, like, yeah, she, uh, she, when she gets a lot of liquor in the system, she becomes a lot to deal with, right? Gotcha. Yeah. And she was, the first time we hung out, it was like a double Jameson or a double whatever. And I had never drank in like a double and like, yeah. I drank the double Hennessy or uh, Jameson or whatever it was. And like, that shit was strong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would drink, but I, I hadn't drank like that until I got with her. But, like, you know, when you're 21 and you're horny and yeah. you're just, like, you know, brown dumb. brown liquor is different. Brown liquor, brown liquor is, different. is different. Like, brown liquor, you know, I don't know what uh, it does for everybody, but brown mm -hmm. liquor for me had my dick on super hard. Like, I, okay. I yeah, it, 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 the, 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 the erection that the brown liquor hit me with was crazy. So we're, like, on one dance floor dancing, and she was like, damn, I could feel your shit. Like, yeah, like, yo, like, My you got to dig out, yo, you, you got to relax, Nick. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying. It's, it's <laughs> truly hard. <laughs> it's, 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 Literally. It's liquor. 
and your ass, you know, she yeah. has a nice ass, and it's like, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I can't help myself. I can't control right. it, you know. But um, so she she caught that vibe, and um, you know, like we 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 made out and we kissed and then we tried to make plans another time and like um and then one time we went to like an apartment to go hang out in the in washington heights and then like she was drunk and high and um the dudes that she was with you know said something that pissed her off and I, i'm learning her. i didn't realize about her and when she gets feels slighted in any sort of way she just blacks out red starts cussing people out starts just talking man shit she don't care where she is and we got kicked out and um, that should have been the first sign that said, Nick, hey, you know what? Maybe you can be cool with this girl, but I don't know if it's worth trying to stick it out and see if you can maybe get laid or, or, or be intimate with her in any sort of fashion. But I'm young and dumb, Nick, so I'm not listening to that. Yeah. Um, you know, she she's also a mother, so she had kids. And, um, and then she started really spiraling. So we didn't see her as much. We lost, we lost touch or whatever yeah. like that. But like from afar... Because of just the the teases, because she's a big tease. The teases mm-hmm. that I got, I was just like, man, like I really want to just, I just want to hit it. Like I don't even know yeah. if I want. I definitely don't want like a relationship or anything like that. But like at that point, I'm just like, I I gotta see what you're like for myself. Yeah. Like just so I I have the knowledge of self. And that's a, it was a, a thing up. with so much build up. And that's the yeah. thing with guys. It's like, like I'm not, I don't want you just for your body. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But. I've already invested so much time and energy texting and, you know, trying to hit you up and make plans to eat and drink and go around. And like, she's the type of girl that loves the bar hop. So that gets, you know, that can be annoying too. If yeah. she just was like, Oh, let's go to this spot. Let's go to this spot. And then just cat money drinks. And I'm just like, damn, she's killing me right now. But yeah. I, I don't want to act like I don't got it. So, you know, you're just going through, you're just going with it because you want to, you, you know, you, you want to just get, you know, have the story, have the feeling of knowing what it was like to be with her. You know, I think that's a nice way of saying it, right? Yeah. Uh, the experience, <laughs> I want, I wanted the experience, right? Yeah, yeah that's so, a very yeah. nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all about in the delivery, right? Yeah, you know, yes. uh, so yeah, ultimately nothing ever seriously materialized, even on the sex part. And, you know, I'm doing my thing in New York, she's, living her life, working, handling her family and stuff like that. Right. Um, LA, she keeps, we kind of keep in touch here and there when she, because sometimes she'll take off her social media. She's also one of those conspiracy theorists. Like, like she is smart and knowledgeable of things, but then sometimes you have people that just kind of like can go too far with all that. And then oh, it's just yeah. like, all right, well, you, all right, I get it. You question, you should question everything and be curious, but when it gets too much, it can kind of be exhausting. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was healthy distance, pandemic, even to here and there. So we'll zoom up to the last time I was here. Because every time I was in New York, I'm like, hey, you know, you should come out to a show. Let's catch up. And she never makes it out. So finally, I do a show at this club, uh, Comedy in Harlem, that's owned and ran by comedians, uh, Jamie Roberts, Nikki Sunshine. They're married um, and they're running a comedy club in Harlem that is, you know, great because yeah. it's uh, mm-hmm. it's one venue. Not, it's not It is a Black-owned club. They you know, let any comic produce shows there and they put up anybody who, who wants to perform and who shows up, but it's predominantly catered towards the black and brown, you know, community and, yeah. and comic wise and, you know, just the audience wise who don't want to maybe go into Manhattan, into the city or downtown. So, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's, it's a, it's a, on a side note, just shout out to them. Shout out so to she you. surprises me and comes to the show. Um, I didn't know she was coming. Um, yeah. She comes to the show, Dolo. Um, she gets to the show like already kind of drunk tipsy like she went so she had drink somewhere beforehand when I see her she just jumps the shit out of me like yeah and I'm like oh okay and it had been years room. at this it had been years at this point years I hadn't okay. seen her like since yeah some uh, damn that could be another episode story the the, the origin story of, of a bad date night that went haywire because we had a, yeah we did like yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it was just that was, and then that was amazing i go like yeah nick come on you can't you can't you can't deal with this girl right. but she surprised me so i was happy to see her obviously because it's like hey like we've been through life and pandemics and all that other shit so yeah she she jumped me in the green room so i'm catching up with comics and then she just bam and then you know like a comic especially like a female comic or whatever they're gonna notice the energy and think like oh this one of nick's little groupies like 
you got girls jumping you up and down and shit like that like and making us she was making noise and it's like you know the club ain't that big so if you're talking loud in the groom you can hear it in the showroom right. so and my boy he's trying to come back tell us yo nick you gotta keep it down yo what's up with her you got she gotta relax and she's like oh my bad my bad like she's doing that stupid drunk behavior yeah yeah um we talk in and then she goes back inside kind of she and then she's the type of person who thinks that like heckling is helping the show right and it's not but she's fucking loose having a good time drinking and she teeters on annoying <laughs> um i have a decent set you know she's like cheerleader you know vibes we go back to the green room hang out some more and then it's like yo so what you want to do i said well um yeah shit fuck it let's just hang out let's catch up so we go to harlem tavern um mm -hmm. that's a spot nearby and it was nice so we're going there we're having drinks like and she's a person social interacts with whoever it doesn't matter who they are and like she starts kind of like hitting it off with some of the women there just like flirting like oh you look good look at you girl yeah, yeah. bitch yeah like all that stuff um you know she wants she, she's drinking she's not killing my budget but it's like all right we're having a good time so i didn't yeah. care about this place at week if we were just posting up a tavern it's going well and then we meet this other group of uh this other two this guy and girl who were like out on i guess you know whatever date night nice little friday night situation and we're getting to know them we're talking shit having drinks they dancing on each other we watching because we got like the two two pretty girls with bodies really like doing stuff guys are looking so it's just looking like yo we the fun section in in, in this bar yeah. and uh, so it's going well and then like you know we kind of hit it off again on the on the uh affection side start kissing yeah, something and something is going and then she's like licking my fingers and just being being her yeah. and then i'm like oh okay so maybe this is tonight nick finally gets the experience right yeah. going well then they tell us about how we're, hey we're gonna go uh to this other spot and go dancing and we said all right fuck it, yeah let's go dance i, I ain't been to a real like spot live is probably people are like dancing sweating having a good time i love i love to do i love doing that yeah. but that that's not the norm most places i go um especially in out in la i like i only have one spot where i know where they kind of like dance on the dance floor and you know we go to this african spot uh i'm gonna give i'm gonna give all these places uh promotion uh so we were at harlem tavern now we're at sylvanas ever been to sylvanas in harlem no it's cool it's like it's a, it's an african-owned spot and they mm -hmm. put but it's like you know you go downstairs and then dark it's like people are dancing it's really it's really cool it's so we're in there we're dancing we're having a good time she's flirting with the girl she's met um i'm talking to the dude the dude's like a real harlem cat you know real cool mm -hmm. swaggy it was, it was it was still cold i think or whatever so yeah um because of february and um so the girl who's with the dude it, the dude goes to the bathroom or to put away his coat put his coat down right this African guy comes behind the girl, not my girl, but the other girl, and starts dancing. She thinks it's her dude, so she just keeps dancing. She's just, you know, shaking her booty, doing whatever. The dude, I guess, sees that, comes back, starts choking the shit out of this girl. Like, in the club, just, bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? You out here dancing this shit with people? Like, just literally, like, choking her in front of everybody in the club. First, he pushes the African dude and it starts choking her. She's like, what the fuck? Like, it's crazy. All of a sudden, all the little good vibes, I'm just like, yo, what the hell is going on? Like, oh, what what the, the my friend, homie, whatever, she's just like, yo, what, what are you doing? Why are you making a scene? This is ridiculous. Yo, you got to relax. And then he's choking her, not choking her, choking her, um, talking, cursing around, just, call, you know, calling call her all kinds of names. Just think, You think I'm stupid? You trying to play me? You trying to make me look a dumbass? And um, the African dudes who were body or security, whatever like that, they're not doing anything. They're just letting them choke this girl. Mm -hmm. And then I'm obviously trying to separate. You know, I want to try to calm him down. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, Nick, you don't know these people. I don't know, like, wow. I don't know this girl. And it's a tough position to be in because in New York, you can kind of be witness to, you can like see a lot of public altercations and, and then women do need protection. Women should feel like somebody would do something noble to 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 just do what's right and separate but unfortunately and i don't know how it works in other cities i just talk about my city but in new york you become so desensitized to seeing stuff happen you don't want to get involved because one 
you can get hurt in the process because you don't know what that those people have under them if they're packing a gun or a knife or whatever say that yep or you try to defend the woman and protect the woman and she doesn't want it she makes excuses she's like yo that's just what we do or or or, or, you know mind your business and then you're like well shit i'm sorry for trying to be a good dude and step in and prevent you from getting choked out or slapped up or punched or what god god knows what else you know what i mean and if he will choke her he'll stab the shit out of you buck 50 (laughs) right down your face like it's and i'm not you know my face i don't have you know i'm i can't do comedy looking with all the cut up looking like you know (laughs) you're gonna have to address it every time like myers yeah yeah every time you go on stage yeah yeah you know so i'm 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 I, I'm very good at, I'm not going to say diffusing, because I, I definitely didn't stop her <laughs> from choking her, but I'm good with not getting a guy to the point where he's going to take his frustrations out on me, but not also looking like I'm trying to um, only side with her. You know what I mean? Because you got to play that really, really, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a nuanced thing. Yeah. And then, but but my my friend is just like, fuck dude what are you doing hitting choking on a girl she's been a, a victim of domestic violence as well so obviously that must have been triggering yeah and then also got and then seeing the african bodyguard standing not doing anything and then he's cussing them out too but they're not doing shit it's only when my friend starts going off and then starts cussing him out starts trying to push him get in his face uh also curse at the africans and she's calling them all kinds of names like yeah you know it's just, it's getting to the the, the 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 stereotypical nasty name calling so then they kick us out we go upstairs, we got to get, then we leave. Then we forget the coat. So we got to go back down and get somebody's coat. And I'm just, you know, and I'm trying to tell you, yeah, we're just going to get the coat. Like, I'm not trying to go back. We're going to get, we're going to leave here. And she's just like, yo, you, why are you, why are you being so nice? And I'm like, fuck these motherfuckers, you know, whatever like that, these bitch ass, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, look, I get it. I get it. I get it. They're pieces of shit. But, you know, we're in their establishment. We need the fucking coat. Let's just get the coat and get out of here. So we're going back out here. It's freezing cold in the winter uh they're they're continuing the fight outside first the girls go off so she can like be a, be a girl and you know a woman sorry not a girl, woman and calm her down and help you know just process what the hell just happened because she's embarrassed yeah. and i'm trying to tell her to do like yo man like you know what are you what, are you, what, what, are you, what were you thinking and he was like yo she was dancing on another dude trying to make me look stupid you know what i'm saying like you know whatever whatever and i'm like no no, no. The, she was it was a real accident she really thought that that was him behind her but you know you could say, yeah, you could have looked behind you to see what was up, but you just have their eyes closed. It's Friday night. We've had we've been having a good drinking. time. It's a vibe. We're drinking. Everything is cool. It's been great up until that point. So you're just thinking, oh, my man's finally back behind me, and I'm going to shake my little booty. I'm going to shake my booty on him, and it's going to be all good. But, it, yeah, the African dude was got overzealous, and she just didn't know, look She didn't look back. So, yeah, man, he, he, he felt the way. Mm-hmm. So now we're on the sidewalk talking, going back and forth, and uh my friend starts to attack him like constantly just trying to fight him and she's like yo i used to fight i don't give a damn i fight a dude you just never put your hands on a woman or a choke a woman and he was like yeah and then this is his lot his justification he was like yeah I, yeah whatever i'm talking but she liked that shit you know what i'm saying like when i when we in the bedroom i be choking her so you know what i'm saying why would it be any different when we outside i'm like yo bro like you cannot use that as justification <laughs> To choke a woman in public just because y'all do that in y'all sex life. Like, that's two yeah, different that's things. Yeah, very different. And granted, they're not boyfriend, girlfriend, but they, you know, they, they have a relationship. They they yeah. intimate. And, uh, yeah, he's putting all the, the nasty stuff out on front street. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so, like, how could you think that that would be cool to do? Like, I would never disrespect you like that. And you just straight out embarrass me. She, she's there. But he, and he's thinking the, the, the choke logic is, is, is rational. Yeah. And um, they keep it becomes like almost like a three-way fight i have to keep separating between my friend the girl and him mm-hmm. arguing and him and back at my friend and just he's going a lot then he gets to the point where like yo he's like yo i'll choke your ass too if you keep fucking doing it and then she attacked it and then i had to separate and at that point i'm like man nick i don't know if you're gonna get any tonight just <laughs> <laughs> i'm still thinking about my my experience is being tampered with because i'm like yeah who's gonna want to have sex after all this um, and if it's going to be sex, it's going to be rage sex. And I don't know if you want rage. Like, I don't know if I was looking for rage sex, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With a drunk. That might not be the vibe tonight. It might not be sex. the vibe I was looking yeah. for. <laughs> so then, yeah, we go to some other spot. Um, wow, we dance you're tra- still hanging. Yeah, yeah, we go. We It was weird. We go to some other spot after. 
when they're oh. playing music and it's very Harlem and shit and you know girls are dancing. Then a uh, fight breaks out with, with 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 the girls who were at that club. So then we have to leave again because I'm like, yeah, this is not gonna this is not gonna work. I don't want to be around another possible uh, you know beat down. So then we, we finally part ways with the with the two Harlem Knights. They they seem to con they're still kind of mad at each other, but I'm like, she's probably still gonna let him fuck. Like yeah. it just you know it'll, it'll be whatever. It'll be passionate makeup sex, and I'm and I'm trying to tell him, yeah, man, just, yo, just make it right so you can give a good makeup sex and you can choke her in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. like let it go. She said, stop. Okay, it was an accident. She apologized. What what more do you want? Like I get it. You 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 would do it in these streets. You don't tolerate like that. But it was I'm I'm telling you, girl. I I'm telling you, my my dude, I don't think she was trying to disrespect you. And yeah, then they eventually walk home together. So then I'm like, well, what do you want to do? And then she was like, um, yo, let's hang out. I want to, I'm not ready to go home. I want to just kind of whatever. And I'm just like, it's like 2 a.m. I'm kind of, don't you think we can kind of just turn it in? She was like, well, we can go back to the crib if you want. And I'm like, yes, we should do that. So at first I was, I was like, I, actually, I had the option to go home in Harlem and I probably should have done it. Yeah, I should have just left and go home. I said, "All right, you caught up with this girl. It probably is best that you, you know, maybe she come to the show is cool, but yeah, don't try to pursue her anymore on the casual side, whatever." Um, so we're in the car, but then she starts getting flirty, teasy again, and then it's 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 the the most confusing mind thing in the world because her like attention span between getting angry, reflect, you know, just talking shit, being a tease wanted to kiss, talk about sex, talk to this other person. It's so distracting. Oh, I'm just like, damn it. I wanted yeah. to leave and now you you're giving me these vibes again. So I'm like, maybe maybe this could work out. We go to the Bronx, we get a get on the cab and I'm just like, oh man, we're gonna I'm gonna cab all the way to the Bronx. And then all of a sudden she's forgetting that she was like talking stuff about us getting hooking up earlier. So then I'm just like, oh man, why did I stay in this cab? And, you know, yeah. and then it's not a, it's not a cheap ride where she lives through. So it's like 30 some dollars. And then um, she's like saying, you know, like, I'm not paying for this cab. And I'm like, well, look, I, I was really just trying to make sure you got home safe or whatever like that. Um, you know, I don't mind splitting with you. But she was like, yo, honey, I don't pay for cabs with, 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 when I'm hanging out with guys. I'm like, that's cool. But we're technically not dating. You know, yeah, like, we're friends. I don't I don't really. Yeah, we're friends. I don't really owe you that. Yes. I get it. You know, you're, a, you know, pretty girl, guys pay for whatever, whatever like that. But I was like, I don't owe you that. You you came to see me. We hung out. I, I paid, I bought drinks, I bought food. We moving around spot to spot. Like, you know, and I'm getting, I, and you've been kind of all over the place uh, emotionally. And I'm just like, yeah, like, I don't, I don't really have to come out of my pocket for this cab. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll, or I'll split it or whatever. But, you know, whatever. I, 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 um, I just pay the cab, whatever that, because I'm not gonna uh, argue back and forth in front of the cab guy. And then, so we go inside to her place. We lie down for a second. I need to charge my phone. And then I kind of try to see if we can calm down, relax, recap on the night, laugh about it some, we're talking about life and stuff. She wants to know, she, you know, she's asking me questions about what I had going on and vice versa. So then I'm thinking, okay, maybe we're settling down. She'll want to just relax. And at this point, Rocky, I'm like, I'm settling for cuddling. Like we yeah. can just lay down in bed and yeah. hold each other, and you know, let's just have a nice, nice chill. You know, just something to laugh about. But you know, some, you know, it was one of those nights for me. I'm just like, hey, look, I'll just, I'll just take what I can get. Yeah. She tells You're me exhausted. she's like, man, I'm exhausted. I'm fucking yeah. like, I haven't, I don't do this. Like, I don't put myself in those environments. Yeah. Not that I'm scared, but it's just like it had been a minute since I've been around doing that kind of shit, and I'm just like, yo, I'm, I'm different. I'm 32 now, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad, I, you yeah. know, even though that doesn't really affect how I, who I spend my time with outside of my my kid, but I'm just like, yeah, I'm not like, I'm not trying to go through shit like that anymore. You know what I mean? Right, and even though, yeah, when you're a dad and you're a parent, it it sh it doesn't affect who you spend your time with. But it does affect some of your decision making because your daughter needs you. So it's like I can't be right. putting myself in chaotic situations all the time because that's right. not responsible to her. But it does remind me, without uh, male influence, you know, uh, you know, people can have really fucked up justifications to do stuff. So I'm like, you know, I got gotta tell her, like, hey, look, when she gets to a certain age, just because you might like something in the bedroom 
Don't yeah. let that be a reason why this guy thinks they can do things to you outside the bedroom if, yeah, if yeah, we ever yeah. get there it's talking about shit like that. But, uh, yeah. you know, uh, to, to get back to it. So she's like, yo, I want to, yo, let's go look to the strip club that's down a block from me. I want to go look at some badass Dominican bitches. And I'm just like, and I love strip clubs too. I'm a yeah. strip club guy. I haven't, I'm not in there as much as I used to, you know, but I'm just like, man, I don't even want to look at girls right now. Like, I don't care yeah. to go to another bar go you know buy drink and whatever at three four That's in the morning two, three bills right there the second you walk in yeah 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 because i'm gonna be probably buying drink yep. and i just like, i don't i don't i don't want to do this I, like, mm-hmm. I actually don't and then she kind of acts like she's okay with like the potential of her leaving while i'm just at the apartment but then i can tell she was psychologically i can tell then she's kind of like stalling or whatever because it's like she was like yeah i'll go out if we're gonna go out but then if you're Staying, I don't, it's not she. You know, she wasn't trying to kick me out, but I could tell she wasn't really comfortable with the idea of staying over. Or she might have been, but like, you know, she didn't. I, the tension span and the, her mind changing every two seconds. I think it was like, yeah, I don't know about you be in the bedroom. You could probably sleep on the couch. Right, right, right. And I'm just like, I didn't come back to the Bronx with you to sleep on the couch. Like, I didn't. I was drunk. Like, I didn't need to do that. I could have just fucking yeah. left in Harlem and went home. And then it's just, you know, then it gets to the point where it's like I'm realizing, yeah, you know what, we're not gonna probably re. re-, re- Kindle the kissing and touching. So I think I'm going to go home. I'm just going to call it. My phone got to 40, 50%. I was like looking at how can I get back to Queens? Because I live in Queens. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm coming from the Bronx. It's going to be a long ass ride home. You know, local stops. I'm just thinking about all those like nights I used to do going to uptown, doing shit like this, trying to get girls and then, you know, coming home for a two hour train ride at three or four in the morning. So I just like, yeah, I say, hey, I'm going to leave, um, you know, enjoy the the, 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 the titties, the, the Latin titties down the street. <laughs> and we'll talk. Uh, and she was like, all right, peace. And then I leave. Luckily, there's a bus that goes from the Bronx to Queens, the Q40, the, the BX44 or whatever. So I walked about 10 minutes and I caught a bus going to Queens and I got home within an hour. And, uh, you know, hey, I, I I made a young guy mistake trying to stick it out, hoping things might turn out my way just because I had what, what was in front of me. And she was a, she's attractive. She's a tease. She, is, she can be a vibe. But there's a lot that comes with a woman like her and, yeah. you know, trying to get some on a Friday night. It yep. can be a lot. Yep. It can wow. be a goddamn a lot. So, yeah. Was that how was that one? <laughs> that was great. And also, I am really happy you told that story because Oh, please tell me. Why are you so happy? <laughs> isn't it because of the conversation, because of the subject matter? Mm. I'm finding the older I get, the more it is it, the easier it is to know who's good for you and who's bad for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it it's almost even if you don't want to know it, even if you are like, I love that, I'm not listening, I'm not listening, you know it. Your energy, the energy can't lie. So when we make the decisions, I look at people like opening doors. When you mm. open that door behind door number three, you know it's chaos. So you you already know what's And coming. I fooled myself thinking that maybe time, life has grown, like things have changed. Right. She's she's probably gotten better, you know, She's and she's older than me. That was another thing. There was an age gap. She's like closer yeah. to 40. Mm-hmm. Um, so I figured, you know, maybe those things that I saw when we hung out back in the day would maybe they, they, they hadn't would, would manifest again. Yeah. Totally did. And, and the reason too is I think I have like an empathy, especially for people who kind of go through really hard times. Right. You know, she's like I said, she's had tr- troubles with alcoholism and other stuff, uh-huh. and she's she's had to like um be away from her kids at one point to get herself better, like going to like treatment facilities, or whatever like that. Yeah. So like I genuinely root for her to be better and to get better because i i think when she i believe when she is like sober and chill she's like i said very smart she's she's cool very fun and and nice to be around she likes to have a good time appetite for life quality good qualities but the liquor and whatever else she could be you know doing when when she when she feels it it turns her into a very very toxic and exhausting person um and yeah and i and i told her i said i said you're exhausted yeah. <laughs> I, I said this is like like this we didn't we we could have had a nice night harlem whatever like that like um we didn't have some of that stuff we could have avoided you know what i mean um right. and I, I i i i fucks with you like I, like i said i got love for you 
and I want to see you be better, overcome your demons and stuff like that. So I think that's the reason why I kind of hold out the window that maybe she can get it right. If she's telling me, hey, you know, I've been sober, I've been trying to be, you know, stay focused. But her thing is, too, is like she works in a, in a social worker. I think when you when you need that when you're in that kind of field, it's an exhausting field. And so it just make you want to drink. And then like her, you know, that natural human, like animalistic, that thing that we kind of have deep down, like she lets it out. Yeah. But it comes out with the liquor and stuff. So it's it's like a lot. And, she, you know, when you have like inner stuff, it just, yeah, man, it all kind of manifests itself in different ways. But, you know, I hope she can get it, you know, to get it together in the way that she wants to. And, um, and you know, as she grows and get, he gets older, and more mature, she'll learn that like, yeah, I don't need to do these things to have a good time. And I'm not my best person when I'm under these kinds of influences. Especially yeah. when I'm with Nick Alexander, a funny, <laughs> nice comedian, you know, charming, just wants to, you know, kick back and I'm cool with whatever I can be. I'm I'm fine in any environment. Like, I'm yeah. not scared or whatever. I, like, you know, I was willing to try to help protect a woman who I didn't know. She was like, you know, whatever. Hey, man, I'm a good guy. I believe I know I'm a good guy. I don't have to prove to you that I am. Nick Alexander. But don't be a lot. <laughs> don't be a lot. Nick Alexander, he goes back for the coat. <laughs> I go back. <laughs> he goes yeah, back to the coast. So, the animal thing is true. The animal thing is true. I those urges, those those rays, those feelings. It, yeah, it, I saw. I saw it with yeah. her tenfold. Yeah. Even last night, I came home around two two thirty in the morning. I actually was at um the cellar. I was watching the chem set, and oh, I, I gotta go to the show before I go. Before I leave, I gotta make it one of these days so, so the chem set, i'm gonna go next wednesday too um all right yeah that'd be great okay it's, let's, it's amazing it's yeah. so much fun i try to go every week um but i i was coming home from that it was like 2 30 in the morning because it ends so late and i'm walking i'm about to turn the corner on the street and i see this bar that i always go to and it's after 2 a.m and i was on the phone with one of my friends and I see everybody, all these people outside the bar laughing, just having a good time. I'm like, y'all, it is Wednesday. But my body is like, what is going mm. on over there? I want to play too. I want to see. But that is, I'm lucky that for the most part, I have the, okay, I got shit to do in the morning. I have, I have yeah. to be responsible. I'm not about to go spend a bunch of money. You didn't take the subway home to go drop $40 in the bar. So like just chill yeah like, the, the yeah. animal urges yeah. to see like and the curiosity is always around the corner man always always and yeah like i have to be very tight with my budget you know mm -hmm. i because I, I'm, I'm trying to manage my personal stuff and finances so yeah man i i, I'm, I always want to go have fun and have a good time um but you got to pick and choose and you got to be selective you got to be realistic too it's just like yeah i don't have it i can't be out trying to act like i have it yes um, no you can't you can't yeah. and then um well so you do so many shows and you do LA and it's you're by coastal which is amazing. yeah yeah this yeah this was the first year I'm saying I'm by coastal if people are. ask me yeah it, now I am yeah it's something I feel like you could say with confidence if you look at your social media you are, <laughs> yeah. no, no but really like you're doing it over in LA and you're doing it when you come back to New York you're very much by coastal so what do you do or what is something you say to yourself just in case anybody needs to hear it? Comedy is such a party lifestyle is so much fun. Mm -hmm. the, shows, the shows are always at night for the most part. Maybe you get a couple brunch shows, but the comedy scene is at night. What do yeah. you say to yourself? How do you find like, okay, I'm Nick. I am a comic. I need to experience life. I want to be part of the party wave but also I need to go home and take care of my business. What is your inner monologue on a night like that where you're kind of getting torn in both ways? Um, you know, ideally when you're in comedy, entertainment, you know, when you get to a certain place, you kind of like realize there, it, there will be cool things going on. Sometimes there'll be a, a lull period and then sometimes you'll have a lot of stuff happen around the same week or two week span. and you'll get invited to things and then there's things that you're trying to go to um after a certain age and i think sometimes you well not, no actually i'm gonna keep it for entertainers because it's not the life for the normal person you know the normal yeah. working person you know um you prefer to you prefer to be invited to something because that's where you're not trying to like get in and hope somebody can help you get inside 
which is very uh, LA thing. Like, you know, when it's like somebody's having like a big event or whatever like that, you're really hoping that you can get through the whole guest list, VIP, Hollywood bullshit and navigate and come inside. Because once you are inside, the people in there know you, but you're, you're not, you're, but you're a quote unquote, nobody to the guys who are working security or outside managing everybody saying who they know. So this is why you should get me in there. Is there, you know what I mean? But yes, um, I yeah, for me, what I'll do is, you know, like when I'm aware of somebody's party or whatever like that, I'll tell myself, okay, you've been you've been out the whole week doing what you're supposed to do, work whether it's working my job to pay the bills, doing enough comedy, you know, three, four nights in a row straight. So prioritize making this party, right? Like there's a mm -hmm. comic friend of mine, a Glodetis Mora. She's uh we call her Glory. She's very funny and talented, uh, and she has a way to just bring kind of bring people together. She likes to curate events and things like that, right? So she has like a a, a mantra or just a saying that she does as a part of her brand, where she's being obnoxious, but she's also kind of serious about just calling it that and putting it in existence called legendary. Like everything she does is legendary. Like my thirtieth legendary birthday party comedy show, thirty one legendary, my legendary brand TikTok, whatever. Yeah, you know, some comics kind of feel like, who is this comic to call herself a legend or whatever like that? But I don't care. Like, I, you should want to feel like you're a legend or whatever like yeah. that. Whatever it takes for you to 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 amplify your 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 belief in yourself. So, and I and I really dig that about her. So from afar, I've I've seen she's only been doing comedy like five or six years, but she's like my age. She's grown in thought. She's a, a, a savvy business person. So I don't treat her like you're a new comic or a comic that's way below me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause social wise, what, like you're, you're, ve you're very much at my level. Um, even if we're years apart in comedy and experience, yeah. but she throws great events and a lot of the scene, especially on the black and brown side, we're very supportive of each other and, and of her. Mm -hmm. I always kept missing her birthdays. Cause she, you know, she does, she does her shows usually in New York. And I'm like, man, I got to go to one of these glory things. And I'm like in LA and you know, this is like, you know, it's not even like a, a huge celebrity's birthday. It's just a friend of mine who just looks like she always has dope events going on. Yeah. So I happened to finally be in New York um, this go around around the time of her birthday. And I had a bunch of shows because I was like hustling to do spots and whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm not going to take on anything this night so that I could finally make it to a glory party, yeah. a birthday. And I and I, I missed the I missed the comedy show. I was I got held up at the house, but I made it in time for the party. And, you know, saw comics that I hadn't seen in years. And those are always great, too, when you just kind of, like, catch everybody in one setting. Mm -hmm. And she probably must have had, like, 50-plus comics show up at certain points throughout the night. And then we were, like, outside talking to, like, comics. Like, Nico, Nico White was there. Mm -hmm. My boy Phil. Uh, just a bunch of guys who I, I raw battles who, you know, I know over time who I just haven't seen and kicked it with. We all were just talking shit outside the party after midnight for like another hour, two hours. Then Gloria nice. comes outside. We surprise her. We sing happy birthday while she's outside in fucking in meatpacking district. So it's like a big group. It's it's looking like a, a like some dope ass New York City event, which we, which it was for our for our space. And um, that was just cool because it was like, all right, that one night I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna go for this party thing. Have a good time meet who I meet, connect, reconnect with who I reconnect with. And then tomorrow, you know, back to the shows and whatever. But I'm going to make sure I make this party. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm not getting caught up trying to go to random bars and parties all the time because that's just not productive. And it, that gets expensive in the York, quite honestly, if you ain't got it like that. No, ain't no reason to be trying to, you know, chase going to bars and parties, whatever like that. So, no. yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think it's like, you know, I, I, I prioritize this one event. I want to vent, hey, you, even if you have a show beforehand, knock out the show, go to the party, kick it there. Don't, you know, run yourself around the city. And then tomorrow you back you back to it. But tonight, just be present, try to have fun um, and do it that way. Then if cause notice what happens is like in L.A., you're not doing as many shows per night. And then you could just end up going to, yeah, I'll go to this bar where people kick it. That's a cool spot. Oh, so it's just it's having a party. And you just kind of feel like I'm going to too many events. What am I really doing? Yeah. That could happen easily. Like two or three nights, there'll be there'll be something, a, a movie premiere that that'll have a nice party, or or a TV show has their rap party, or um, somebody has a birthday thing, or, or okay. some event. There's so much going on in LA, and it's, you know, and for the dudes that just got money that want to chase beautiful chicks, yeah. that works for them. But for me, it's just like, yeah, I'm I'm doing too much partying, not enough working. You don't feel like you're working. Yeah. So yeah.
and it runs your body down too. So it's really important to find a balance. It's really important. And it's yeah, really yeah, but finding one, Nick, it feels like you got a good one. Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, my sleep pattern, I I still late nights for sure. Um, yeah. Getting home two, three, maybe not crashing till four, especially yeah. when I'm in New York. L.A., it's funny. L.A., like, like I'm not successful enough yet where I'm going to these parties that, like, the after things that go on all night. Like, I don't I don't have that many. I'm not tapped in like that. But, like, most people, when you go to L.A., like, you know, L.A. shuts down, like, 132. So okay, you're still yeah. in bed by a decent time, especially because you can just drive home or whatever yeah. like that so like yeah even if i'm find myself then i'm going to too many events i'm my curfew time is still kind of decent you know yeah you're still in bed by a decent hour because that's just how la la is but yeah i'm totally yeah I, i'm figuring out that balance thing of you know having fun socializing in that you know party vibe sets setting and then making sure i'm doing my work as a stand-up as a comic as a you know hu- you know hustler however i'm doing my, my stuff so yeah it's um yeah, man, good. You know, I, I think I, I have it okay right now. I think you do too. And uh, just so everybody knows, so they can check you out, people in yes. LA don't have an excuse, and people in New York don't have an excuse. How yes. long are you in New York? I'm here till the ninth, uh, okay. August ninth. Right. So, um, were you going to ask me to plug something? I was going to ask you to plug your social media, so everyone, can, everyone can follow you. If they haven't followed you from episode five. Or right, I right, right. It's episode four, actually. If they haven't followed you from then, okay. Follow you now. Yeah, please check out the first it. episode on Rocky, <laughs> Rocky's podcast, and then yes, you guys can follow me um any social media platform at Nick of Comedy N I C K O F C O M E D Y one word Nick of Comedy. Uh, yeah, Nick Alexander. But yeah, that usually if you type in Nick of Comedy, anything of mine comes up because I'm the only one with those handles on everything. So oh, I left out. I beat out all the other Nicks uh there's only one Sorry, nick of guys. comedy that, that's me and i have a a show i hope you can make it out to this one rocky so you know i'm doing my spots and whatnot yeah. but uh saturday july 29th okay. um uh, at one in one lounge in the east village uh of uh 6 p.m i'm doing a 30 minute set so um i'm encouraging everybody you can get tickets the link is in my bio i'm collabing with uh my friend todd monesty who runs a, a brand of shows called the ug comedy and Amazing. they have this really nice venue in the city, uh, one in one lounge. And it's like right off the F train. If you go on the first on the Avenue corner. exit on the corner. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they have a nice, beautiful space where they where you can produce a nice, intimate show. So, yeah, I'm running a half hour set and I have some of my friends performing. Uh, Shatara Curry, Quan Wiggins, uh, Lana Sabell, um, Todd Monesey will be also performing as well. And I'm, I'm doing 30 minutes. So, yeah, it's at one in one lounge, Saturday, July 29th, 6 p.m. And to get tickets, it's the the link is in my bio and my uh, on my Instagram, or yeah, just you know you can save that date and, and show up. And yeah, it's gonna be a great time. So it's my it's the length the the only one show I'm doing a longer set, you know, um, in New York before I go back to LA. So yeah, if you want to catch me, you know, and and then we're gonna hang out at the bar afterwards and drink and catch up. Whoever shows up, you know, that's that'll be my little kickback that Saturday. You know, that's um, your legendary kickback. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna it's gonna be a legendary early Saturday kickback, you know, after a six PM show. So yeah, you got plenty of time to do whatever you got going on the rest of the night. But yeah, spend some time with me, six PM, Saturday, July 29th, thirty minutes set, and Nick Alexander and friends at the one in one lounge in the East Village, New York City. Come on out for me, please. Come on out. Come on out for Nick. Nick, this was so much fun as usual. You delivered with the story, delivered with the conversation, and I just can't thank you enough. You always come through for me. Thank you for being patient with me. I uh, I, I sincerely apologize for my technical no stuff. Trouble. Um, no I'm glad we got it to we figured it out, and I'm glad we actually made it happen. You know, I really I didn't want to be flake, and I wanted to do the day when you hit me up like, "Hey, can you do this week?" I'm like, "Yeah, let's figure it out this week. Let's let's, let's just out. do it. I don't want to I want to put it down the line. You know how it goes sometimes." As yeah. long as I have this show, Nick, you always have a platform to come and tell your wild story. So I thank you. I love yeah. you. And you and I will love talk you too. soon, all right? All right, Rocky. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. <laughs>